All right, just one more candy corn and this masterpiece will finally be complete. Sometimes I have to reason with myself that I am not that good, but I know deep down that I am that good. John, can you feel it? Magic is in the air. I'm going back in. You bet I can feel it, Jock! And you know what? It's wasted in here. I'm gonna go share this with the world. Hey everyone! Isn't it such a beautiful feeling? Not the way, asshole! Jesus! Alright, well, while the outside world may not be so keen on enjoying the spirit of the season, I can always enjoy Halloween from my own living room. And hey, even better with the company of a time-weathered friend. You can count me in. Okay. One. What even? I counted you in. Go to fucking hell. Goosebumps! Who could forget these classics? These are just the thing to get my spooky nostalgia senses tingling. Easy reads for tough-as-nails kids. Yeah, they may look silly on the outside, but let me tell you, what awaits you within the pages of these books is not for the faint of heart. This stuff was scary for a kid. I mean, who could forget such classics like The Haunted School, The Headless Ghost, You Can't Scare Me, Why I'm Afraid of Bees, that's less obvious, isn't it? Piano lessons can be moida. The Beast from the East. We, we talking like Asia or like Philadelphia? What are, we, what are we going for here? Girl Who Cried Monster? Oh shit, I actually remember this one. This one scared me. And my personal favorite Halloween-tinged epic, Attack of the Jack-O-Lanterns. I'm spooked solid. But hey, that's not all. Who could forget the Goosebumps TV show? <laughs> yeah. Goosebumps, along with Are You Afraid of the Dark, were the two scariest shows for a kid growing up in the 90s. A Tales from the Crypt for Kitties. I can't do that. Ow. I can't wait, Jock. I just can't wait. I know it's going to bring me right back. It's got to be as good as I remember. <laughs> okay, it's horrible. You will be You're in for a scare. Yeah, if you consider bad writing and acting a scare, then this show is Hannibal Goddamn Lecter. Alright, just gonna check that one off the bucket list. Man, I am just blazing through these. I love how on the intro, whatever the G glides past becomes suddenly evil. The lady on the billboard goes from normal to a slightly upset meth addict slash Michael Jackson. It just cracks me up every time how subtle the change is. Honestly, a lot of episodes of Goosebumps are downright entertaining and a pretty good representation of the books. I mean, who can forget the first time they watched Haunted Mask? It still skeeves me out just thinking about it. <laughs> but unfortunately for you, that's not what we're focusing on here today. We're gonna have a look at some of the absolute worst that this show had to offer. Starting off with, don't go to sleep. Or at least try not to, cause this episode blows! Get that in there, you gotta do, you gotta do like a taco, some method. So, in this episode, we're met with Matt and his family at the dinner table, treating each other with the kind of respect you'd expect to see from a middle-class American family. How come Greg gets to go and I don't? Because you're a midget. You know, I could completely see the base to that insult. It's a school night for Greg. Well, Greg's 17 and you're 12. And your father left when you were 7 and I'm a single mom and you've had a dark yet somehow relatable past. It seems like nothing can go right for our hero Matt, if you want to call him that. His siblings seem to get everything and he's stuck with a short stick. And he ain't shy of letting everyone know it. Mom? What is it, honey? I'm in a hurry. I was wondering if I can move my room to the attic. No, honey, don't be ridiculous. It's out of the question. That's not fair. How come I never get anything I want? Greg gets to stay out late. Pam gets her own phone line. I said no. You dirty bitch! Look, honey, I know it's frustrating, but you won't be 12 forever. Or will he? Spooky, scary skeletons. I don't want to be 12. I hate being the youngest. Sorry, that's the way it is. That's reality, Matt. Jesus, if this woman ain't the spinning image of childhood wonder. I'm pretty sure this entire episode so far, she's just been answering directly. Well, Greg's 17 and you're 12. Talk to me in three years. That's reality, Matt. So Matt goes up to the attic anyways, which is clearly what every kid wants. He gets scared by a mannequin and lays right down on this spider-ridden bed. You know, like your average Canadian-American kid. Hey, how's it going? You know something? I don't care what anyone says. I'm hanging out here tonight. Not old enough. Like, what's gonna happen? I don't even care if I stop taking my meds. I'm not taking them. So, 
For a few moments, he gives himself a dick flashlight, and then for some reason, the bed starts spinning and sends him into an alternate reality where he's the center of attention. Um, can I use the phone? Someone no, wake up the cameraman. Good morning, champ. Mwah. It turns out in this world, Matt is a famous sports star, and he just can't seem to keep the attention off him. Yeah, this is Matt Amsterdam. Indoors? Indoors what? I thought sports were played outdoors. You want to put my pitcher on a cereal box? What's that? My dad's been dead ten years, my mother's a single parent, and all I want out of life is to make it in the big leagues like my hero Jackie Robinson? Truth is stranger than fiction. That's reality. Nothing so strange as... Who is speaking right now? Life is on a roll. That's reality! So here we meet these two vague characters who are spying on Matt as he's about to go to some important hockey match. But as he'll remind you... I don't even play hockey! Hey kid! This is your fantasy. Don't go around blaming the world for your lack of subfot. <laughs> Can we please give that one one more time? <laughs> That's magnificent. It sounds like my old 1992 IBM computer starting up. So this is where things really start to get amazing. We got Hockey Coach Man over here just making, ooh, just making a scene for everyone to enjoy. Come on, what's going on? Let's get some heads up hockey. That guy out there, I'll tell you something. $10 million dollars in all of it, that's the game. I see you guys out there, you'll be set down to the minors. Hey, get up, get up. Guys, look at this guy, look at him. $10 million. Get him on out there, don't be like that guy. Looks like a little kid out there. Oh. I feel like they gave this guy specific lines, but he just said fuck it and did whatever he wanted, and they're all like, oh, it's lunch break, I don't care, just leave it. So after a while of Matt getting his shit kicked out of him, <laughs> he tries to explain that he's in fact not a hockey player, but get this, a kid. Learn what? What I do? I'm not a pro hockey player, I'm a kid! Because apparently those two features are just not possible at the same time. And he's finally met with, um... Your mommy? <laughs> <laughs> Matt tries to run from these vague men in black light characters and runs through the hockey goal into an emergency unit operating room. What? Dr. Amsterdam. There you are. Doctor, you're gonna have to take off your hockey skates. Clearly there's nothing strange about that. There's been a mistake. I'm not a doctor. It's true. You're a genius. Now, lady, you know that's well you just said ain't right. Ready for surgery, doctor. Surgery? Zikes! Zoinks! As you can see, the growth is in a particularly delicate area of the brain. Now, if the operation is successful, the president will be Jesus. perfectly fine, but uh, one small slip. That's some heavy shit, Doc. The whole world's counting on you. As you can see, the safety procedures at this hospital are pretty much top notch. Dr. Amsterdam. At this point, Matt's getting pretty sick of this undercover Mary-Kate and Ashley bullshit, and he finds himself in yet another alternate reality. One in which, he has to defuse a bomb. Once again, no one around him seems to know what to do. You got me? I don't know anything about bombs! His reaction is very appropriate, if I'm being honest. That is Matt Amsterdam. <laughs> Moments away from getting blown to shreds, <laughs> he still has time for a joke. I told you! I don't know anything about bombs! I'm a kid! So then he's at a wedding? His wedding? Oh, this is making a whole lot of sense. Finally, he finds himself in some sort of extra physical court, where these two guys at last reveal themselves as the reality police. Where am I? He wants to know where he is. <laughs> <laughs> is that a funny question? Because at this point, I'm pretty sure that's about a reasonable question. I'll tell you where you are. You're in trouble. All right, let's just stop for a minute and try to reason this out. All right, so I'm here, and here also happens to be, well, let's call it trouble. All right, so just run a few schematics on that, and uh, yeah, it's looking pretty good. In trouble is not a location. Ah! Ah! Will the defendant please rise? If the judge backs up a bit. You Matthew Joseph Amsterdam are charged with crimes against reality! How do you plead? Well, not guilty. Floss. Man, this is a case even Johnny Cochran couldn't touch. I'll be the judge of that. 
Okay, for curiosity's sake, of what crime is this innocent kid suspected? You weren't happy being the youngest in your family. You didn't accept the way things were. Roll the videotape. Reality. Who needs it? I hate reality. <laughs> okay, let me get this straight. This kid's crime is wanting to fight the system even when it might be wrong? As you know, accepting the status quo is paramount in this country. How do you think we keep special interest groups lobbying so efficiently? Guilty! Guilty? Guilty, guilty, guilty! Man, we get it. You don't gotta be a dick about it. So Matt goes home and never questions anything ever again. Happily ever after. Oh, except for the part where they still decide to fuck with him for the rest of his life. The fun's just beginning. So there you have it, folks. The moral of this story is never think, or else the secret police might catch you and kill you no matter what. It's good for the kids if it's good for the adults. I hate to stop the fun now, but this episode was just too big for one segment. We still have two more books to cover, so don't go too far. And don't worry, part two will be out faster than you can say. Is, it, is someone in my bathroom? Is this... Is there, so, I, is there someone in my bedroom? I can see a, an outline, but I'm not sure. While you're waiting, you can follow JonTron on Facebook and Twitter to get the most up-to-date JonTron info. Man, I can't wait for part two. I'm itching. I don't know. I just can't wait to see more Canadian actors doing their thing. Saying things like about... Why are both Are You Afraid of the Dark and Goosebumps Canadian shows? Hey there, this is uh, Canada. Our main export there is uh, Can't Be Children's Hire. Is that a Canadian accent? I don't know. 